So we all know that Joe Montana is synonymous with winning, and he did so much of it during his career. Joe Montana is one of the greatest football players of all time. Capturing four Super Bowls, three Super Bowl MVPs, and two MVP awards. So how exactly did he become Joe Cool, though? By growing up in a family that valued sports, that's how. Let's find out just how Joe Montana ended up becoming Joe Montana. I'm Jesse with NFL Dive, and this is the family of Joe Montana. Joe Montana was born on June 11, 1956 in New Eagle, Pennsylvania. His parents, Joseph Clifford Montana Sr. and Teresa Marie Bufuzo Montana, lived in the coal mining town of Monongahela, Pennsylvania, which is about 40 minutes south of Pittsburgh. Growing up in a blue-collar town helped give Joe a mindset to work hard. A lot of men in the town walked up hills to get to the mines each day, traversing the landscape each day for a hard day's work. His parents worked hard to make sure that he had the upbringing that he needed to succeed. Joe Montana Sr. was a strong-headed man who wanted his son to succeed. He was a Navy veteran who worked as the manager of a finance company on Main Street in their town. He was a descendant of Italian immigrants who came to America looking for the American dream. But Montana Sr. made a lot of himself and was a decent athlete while in the service who loved to compete in sports. He was a huge basketball fan and played against students and teachers in pickup games at the local high school. But having growing up with immigrant parents who were working at the time, he never was brought up in sports. That's why he wanted it differently for his son. He talked about how he never had someone to throw the ball with him growing up, and that's why he made sure to make a good point of that with his own son. So every night he would play catch with Joe with either a football or a baseball, instilling the importance of sports in his son's life. His father also set up tire swings in the yard to help Joe practice his accuracy. He even took the job at the finance company so that he could spend more time with his family. It turned out to be an awesome decision because Joe became known for his precision in the NFL. If you can thread the needle on a tire swing, imagine what kind of window you can squeeze a throw in between defenders. Joe Sr. wanted his son to be the athlete that he couldn't be. He wanted to give his son all the opportunities that he didn't have growing up in a lower income family, but he didn't have to work hard to get Joe Jr. to buy in. Joe Sr. saw how much his son loved sports and he kept guiding him and working with him to help him succeed. From football to basketball to baseball, there were always sports being played in the Montana household. Joe Sr. and his wife Teresa only had one child, so they did everything they could to make him happy and grow up loving sports. Joe Sr. knew that his son wanted to play football, so he enrolled him at the age of eight. But in the county, the age limit was nine. So his dad lied and listed his age at nine. A dad trying to make his son happy by enrolling him in sports before he was even eligible is the kind of dad who is trying to raise a son that is good at a specific sport. We can all say that it worked out well for the family. Joe Sr. always watched Joe Jr.'s games from the stands, keeping an eye on his son's talent. He would attend practices for all sports to do so. But he always wanted what was best for his son and wanted him to have every opportunity to succeed. He even threatened to pull him out of high school to play for another team because he didn't like the way his high school coach wasn't giving his son a chance to win the starting quarterback job. Joe Sr. always ran through drills with his son, making sure he stayed true to his mechanics to become the best quarterback he could. Joe Sr. was described by a friend of Joe's as his best friend. Quote, Joe and Mr. Montana were best friends who happened to be father and son, end quote. His dad was there to watch him throughout his collegiate and professional career as well, attending Notre Dame games and 49ers games. In his Hall of Fame speech, Joe thanks his parents for all they'd done for him, saying they were always there. They took me where I wanted to be, where I needed to be, and got me there on time and made tremendous sacrifices to make sure I had things that they never had. Joe Sr. passed away in 2017. Teresa Montana worked as a secretary at Joe Sr.'s finance company. 
She fully supported Joe Sr.'s ambition to push Joe Jr.'s talents in sports. She was a loving mother who took pride in making her son the Italian dishes of her heritage. Teresa helped make her son's interest his passion, but she also kept up on him to do his homework. She and Joe Sr. would go to all of Joe's games, even traveling to Notre Dame and many NFL games to watch their son play. They were seen in the crowd in rain, sleet, snow, and wind to watch their son do just what he'd always wanted to do, compete. And they were there for all the ups and downs of his career and got to be on hand to watch him win multiple Super Bowls in person. In 1987, she and Joe Sr. moved out to San Mateo, California to be closer to Joe playing for the San Francisco 49ers. In 1991, she was in a commercial with other mothers of famous California celebrities about the benefits of carpooling in the state. Teresa sadly passed away in 2004. Joe married his hometown sweetheart, Kim Moses, in his second semester at Notre Dame when he was 18 and she was 19. She was Joe's first real girlfriend and they got married very fast, despite Joe's parents urging him to wait. They moved into a small apartment together and she got a job in the sports information office. They were kind of celebrities at Notre Dame as he was the quarterback and she was the woman on his arm. But eventually getting married so young did not help their marriage and they divorced three years later. Kim eventually left South Bend and became a prominent television producer. However, she was sued by Joe in 2008 because she sold love letters and memorabilia from their time together without his consent. Joe didn't waste much time getting married again. After divorcing Moses in 1977, he met Cass Castillo, a flight attendant, in his final year at Notre Dame. They started dating in 1979 and got married in 1981, but this one also didn't last long. She was with him when he became a star and was drafted into the NFL and when he won his first Super Bowl, actually. She was in the spotlight a lot because of how famous her husband became. He was the dose of the NFL and they had a lavish home with horses and Ferraris, but she never felt comfortable in the spotlight. She tried her best to shy away from the spotlight, but ultimately she was thrust into it a ton. The couple split in 1984 and went through a tough divorce. Joe really didn't waste a lot of time getting hitched again, despite going 0 for 2 in the marriage game before that. He met Jennifer Wallace, an actress, while they both worked on a Schick razor commercial. And this close shave worked out well for both of them. Jennifer didn't even know who Joe was when they filmed the commercial, despite him being a two-time Super Bowl MVP. Just goes to show, not everyone's into sports. Joe hadn't learned his lesson from his failed marriages and proposed six months into them dating but Jennifer didn't say yes and basically told him she wasn't ready yet. So they continued to date and Joe eventually proposed again soon after with an airplane note and she said yes. They have been married since 1985 and have four kids together. Jennifer and Joe have done many charitable endeavors together including starting the Four Rings Montana Family Foundation. She owns her own company also called Jennifer Montana Design. She's been with Joe for his two other Super Bowls and his switch from the 49ers to the Kansas City Chiefs. Oh, and she was with him during his Hall of Fame induction. And I actually have a pretty interesting story about her. So in 2020, her and Joe actually saved their nine-year-old grandchild from being kidnapped at their home. A woman snuck into their house and took their grandchild from their playpen, but Jennifer and Joe were able to de-escalate the situation and she wrestled the baby out of the woman's arms and Joe got the cops. Jennifer and Joe are frequently on social media and are seen all over California at local events. Alexandra Montana was born in 1985 after her parents were married that very same year. She also attended Notre Dame just like her father and graduated in 2008. She then went on to attend Loyola Law School of Loyola Marymount University and earned a Doctor of Law and Masters of Law. After working a few years in banking, she has been a lawyer since then. She has kept a pretty private life and is not on any forms of social media. 
Elizabeth Montana was born in 1986 and has been in the public eye for much of her life. She worked to break into the modeling world when she was just 18 and she wanted to work in the fashion industry overall. She's still a model and works as the director of operations for Liquid2 Ventures, a venture fund which was opened by Joe. She is also a certified sommelier. Nate Montana followed in his dad's footsteps and played for Notre Dame as a walk-on quarterback. He then transferred to Pasadena City College, back to Notre Dame again, and then to the University of Montana before ending his career at West Virginia Wesleyan. He had a very good senior season at West Virginia Wesleyan in 2012, throwing for nearly 2,500 yards and 19 touchdowns. He had some run-ins with the law while he was in college, he was arrested for underage drinking at Notre Dame in 2010, and was arrested for suspicion of DUI while at Montana in 2011, although the charges were dropped. He also currently works at Liquid2 Ventures with his sister. Nick also played college football for a few different schools. He was highly touted coming out of Oaks Christian School in 2009, and he committed to the University of Washington as a quarterback and redshirted his freshman year before playing a bit the next year. He then transferred to Mount San Antonio College and had a terrific year, throwing for 4,600 yards and 36 TDs in 2012. In 2013, he transferred to Tulane University and threw for 15 TDs across two seasons there. He then went on to be undrafted in the 2015 NFL Draft. Joe's kids have kept a pretty low profile, but he and his wife are public figures who are frequently out and about. You've probably seen Joe in Skechers commercials or as a celebrity salesperson for Guinness in the campaign he did with Joe Burrow. After all, when you're the comeback kid, it's hard for you to stay out of the game. If you like this video, then you will definitely like these videos on the screen now. I've been Jesse with NFL Dive. Thank you so much for watching.